Hello, everyone, and welcome to the Your Mark on the World show. I'm your host, Devin Thorpe. I'm a Forbes contributor covering social entrepreneurship and impact investing. And today we have a remarkable guest on the show. Uh, our guest is Amit Bori, who is the CEO and co-founder of The Gin, the Global in Impact Investor Network. Uh, Amit, welcome to the show. Thank you, Devin. I really appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Well, I really think, uh, it, it, let, me, let me go back. In your, in our pre-interview interview, you, you gave me some interesting feedback. You, you suggested that we're at a, a shift in time with respect to impact investing, where people are no longer asking what impact investing is, but instead how to do it or how to do it better. And I think that's where you come in, right? At, at, at the gin, that's your work to try and help impact investors be more effective, especially with respect to measurement of impact. Am I understanding your take correctly? What do you think? Uh, that's right. Um, the gin is a nonprofit organization and our mission is to increase the scale and the effectiveness of impact investing. As we believe impact investing can be a powerful tool to address social and environmental challenges all around the world. Um, one of the things that's quite exciting about what's happened in the last few years is that many people are um, increasingly aware uh, that they can use their investment dollars to have an impact on the world. But then the next question, of course, is how do I do that? And also, how do I do that well? Um, and that's what we work on at the gym, is trying to both raise awareness of impact investing, uh, because most people still don't know that they can invest in a way that is aligned with their values and that has a positive impact on the world, but then taking it a step further of helping them become effective impact investors. Uh, so they achieve their financial goals, uh, but also can have a great impact on a variety of sectors, uh, whether it be sustainable agriculture, affordable housing, uh, increasing financial services for the poor, um, or any number of ways in which investments can be used uh, to address social and environmental problems. Now, I don't want to focus too much on your IRIS database, but it seems to me that that is a clear uh, activity that you're conducting that advances those corporate uh, objectives, right? Of being able to help people be more effective by creating standards for measuring impact. Can you tell us more about the IRIS database? Sure. Uh, so when you're thinking about being an effective impact investor, uh, you want to make sure you both um, invest well and achieve your financial goals, but also that you achieve the impact um, that you're seeking to have. And one thing that we think is critical um, for understanding your impact is to use a data-driven approach to measuring, monitoring, and then eventually managing towards having a greater impact through your work. IRIS uh, is a catalog of generally accepted metrics for social, environmental, and financial performance. And so it creates common definitions uh, so you can understand how, what's, what are the best ways for you to measure your impact um, in any number of sectors. So financial services, like conservation, renewable energy, um, and many more. Um, now what IRIS does is it provides you with the definitions by which you can understand how are my investments having an impact? You know, how is this changing over time? And that allows for a data-driven conversation about how do I actually have a greater impact over time with my investments. Well, and that really is the essence, I think, of, of what I understood you to be talking about, right, is to help people figure out how to measure impact. And I think uh, impact investing sort of begins with this concept of intentionality. I choose to make this investment, at least in part because it has some social benefit. But the other side of that coin seems to me to be that there has to be some measure of accountability, right? We have to be able to measure and report on the impact in the same uh, clarity that we measure financial returns. And I think that's what you're helping people to do. Isn't that right? That's right. Um, what's important is to um, not only to start with the right intentions, but right, to make sure you're proactively selecting investments because of the positive impact that they can have. But then you're also um, focusing on how do we actually measure our performance against those goals? You know, so if I'm trying to alleviate poverty in a community, how are my investments actually making headway um, on that issue? Or if I'm trying to create a more sustainable way of um, farming food resources for a community, how do I make sure that my investments are actually performing well? Um, you know, investors, whether they're impact investors or traditional investors, 
are very focused on performance, and IRIS provides the language by which you can understand your impact performance. It is interesting to me that as, as I think about this, we have developed countless ways for measuring financial returns, and, and we can understand in uh, almost instantly what it means to uh, have a 23% a, a ROI or a 12% IRR, or simply to know that our portfolio is up by 12% uh, so far this year. And we, we check our, our portfolio balances every day. How do we get that kind of clarity now on the, and that instantaneous almost feedback on returns with respect to our impact measures? Well, I think uh, having a deeper understanding of our impact is really important. And we provide tools through IRIS uh, to be able to do that. But it's very difficult. You know, this is, you know, trying to understand um, how to um, better address some of the world's most challenging problems is not easy. Um, and that's why we think it's so important to complement tools like IRIS with a learning community. Um, and that's why the GIN is fundamentally constituted as a network. Uh, so we have a network that includes over 220 organizations in 32 countries. Um, and that includes huge banks, uh, large foundations. It also includes fund managers operating um, everywhere from the Pacific Northwest of the United States to Africa and Asia. And through this network, we facilitate a learning community uh, where investors can you know, share how they're approaching their impact measurement, what strategies are working, and over time, of course, it will help raise the bar for the impact they can achieve through our investments. I think this is really important. What are the activities that the GIN is engaged in, in addition to the IRIS database, that would help people be, be more effective impact investors? Well, IRIS is a cornerstone of our work, but there are other elements of our programs that we think are also leading to building a much more vibrant impact investing market. Um, so one of the main things that we do um, is support the membership network, uh, which I just mentioned earlier. And so 220 diverse organizations in over 30 countries around the world. Um, in addition to that, we provide a lot of research on impact investing. Uh, so re uh, the market is very young. It's incredibly dynamic. And we want to help illuminate the activity in this market, again, with that attention of helping investors become more effective at having an impact and achieving their financial goals. Um, we also have an online directory of impact investment funds and products called Impact Base. So an excited investor who wants to figure out how to get started um, can access Impact Base and understand which types of opportunities are out there. Now it lists over 350 funds and products uh, all around the world. Um, and then last but not least, we also have wanted to support the uh, capacity of fund managers. Um, you know, so there are many people who are starting up impact investment venture capital funds and loan funds all around the world. Uh, and so we recently um, have been uh, operating a fund manager training program, uh, which is training fund managers in South Asia and Sub-Saharan Africa in partnership with the UK government. Um, as well as in the U.S. Uh, to help them become more effective at both making impact investments, but also in achieving an impact and measuring it um, through their efforts. Um, we think collectively this portfolio helps give us a, a comprehensive way of building um, this market and ultimately achieving our mission, which is to increase the scale and effectiveness of impact investing. Well, it's clearly clear that you are on that track. Uh, Ahmed, I want to just take advantage of the opportunity I've got with you to ask you some personal questions, get, okay. get some personal insight from you. But you have become a real power player, a real influencer in the impact investing world, uh, largely because of the IRIS database and the work that you created there. But who do you look up to for inspiration? Well, there are a lot of people <laughs> that I look to for inspiration and a lot of people that I admire. Uh, one thing that really stands out to me uh, are people who have overcome a lot of personal kind of adversity in their lives, but are able to channel that experience uh, in a way that actually helps improve the lives of others. Uh, and these people are all around us. Uh, so just a, a couple of examples. Uh, you know, one organization and one person that we work with uh, is Darren Walker, uh, who leads the Ford Foundation. Um, who had you know, overcome you know, many challenges in the 
the early years of his life and now leads one of our most powerful institutions in the philanthropic sector, both as an impact investor and as a grant maker uh, with a real focus on social justice. Um, I'd also say on a, on a very personal note, um, I really admire and am, and am inspired by um, my own mom um, who raised us uh, on her own, uh, my brother and I, um, and continues um, to inspire me and help me think about you know, kind of um, you know the, how I can become the best person that I can become. No, that's great. Well, uh, Ahmed, I wonder why, and maybe it gets back to your your mother as an influencer, but but I wonder why you've chosen to be engaged in much of your career, not just at uh, the gin, but but in your prior career, much of your time and attention has been spent uh, worrying about social justice issues and helping people do more good in the world. Why do you care so much about doing good? Well, for me, it does go back to my roots, um, as you uh, suspected. I think you know the way I was raised um, was um, by a single mom since I was three years old. And in early days, we had to rely on welfare and public assistance uh, through a variety of forms uh, to help us kind of get on our feet. Um, and I've been, I feel very privileged to be in the position I'm in today uh, and to be able to work on issues like impact investing. Um, but it really comes from those early years where I knew that um, you know, I was very grateful for the opportunities that I was able to have despite my upbringing um, and the environment um, that I had um, early on. And I want to make sure that everyone else who comes from that same background can have those same opportunities. Um, so at its core, that's what motivates me to work in the social sector and to uh, put purpose at the forefront of my career. Amit, um, you talk about where you were raised. Where were you raised? What, 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 tell us a little bit more about the yeah. circumstances of your childhood. So I was raised in a rural town in, the, in Northern California uh, called Grass Valley. Um, it's a town of, at the time, I believe, is around 8,000 people. Uh, it's grown a little bit, but not much. Um, and uh, my parents were divorced when I was three, and so my mom raised my brother and I on her own um, from that point on, and she um, uh, relied, as I mentioned earlier, on welfare um, for a few years while she put herself through school, um, and since then we've um, been able to you know, live very comfortably and have a lot of opportunities. I've been able to go to great um, schools and work at great places with tremendous people, uh, and I'm forever grateful for that. Yeah, but it, it, it's interesting how those experiences, those challenges shaped your life and, and how your mother worked to overcome them. That's really inspiring. And I appreciate uh, you sharing those personal details with us today. W one last question I want to get from you. We try to get from all of our guests uh, some impact hack, some tip that would help us do more good in the world. What's yours? Well, I think that um – I imagine there's so many people um, who, who follow your blog um, and your broadcasts who are doing tremendous work around the world. And I think we live in a very exciting time. It's a very dynamic time. So things are constantly changing. Uh, and one thing that's been really important for me um, that you know, I try to do and, and you know, as my role as leading the gin um, is to continue to stay fresh and current and make sure that the, you know, the way that we're approaching our work is what the you know, world needs um, at, at this moment. And what I think is really critical is to constantly build in some mechanism to reflect on how things have evolved and how we need to adapt. Um, and so I think it's something that we all talk about, but I actually think you need to carve out some time to do this periodically. Um, and just ask yourself the question of you know, what's changed and how do we need to change what we're doing um, to adapt and continue uh, to push out the frontier of our work. Uh, and I think it requires quite a bit of humility to take a look back and say, okay, maybe the things that we've been doing aren't the ways that we should be approaching them in the future. Um, but also a lot of confidence uh, to be able to ask that question and be able to take a different tact. Um, but I think that type of kind of feedback loop is really critical um, for anyone doing anything uh, with a focus on social impact. Uh, and I certainly try to do that myself, and it's been incredibly helpful for me. It's, it's sometimes challenging. Uh, because it requires us to have the humility to accept that we might be able to do something better. That's right. Uh, uh, and, and that is challenging, but I appreciate you pointing that out because I think it is essential to, to our progress collectively and individually. Well, Ahmed, thank you so much for taking the time to be thank with you. us today. Before you go, could you please share with us how people can uh, get in touch with you or the gin and learn more about your work and the Iris database and stuff? 
Sure. Um, certainly, you can follow the GIN's website at www.thegin.org. Um, and I also encourage you to follow our Twitter handle, uh, which is at uh, the GIN, which is G-I-I-N. Um, and we would love to have all of you uh, engage with us and follow our work. And we hope that we are providing resources that help you do uh, what you're trying to do uh, to have an impact on the world. Fantastic. Well, uh, Ahmed, again, thank you very much for being with us today. Oh, and we you. wish you every success in your great work. Thank you so much for this opportunity. And thank you all for listening. All righty. Let's do some good. Thanks.